Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N. Y, and the second word is and, spelled A-N-D, and the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first question in America today is from someone who had a car accident. Uh, he was He relates the story to us. He was driving through a rotary, uh, you know, that's on a highway, when you get to a certain place in a highway where they have all the cars form a circle, travel in a circle, and to get off at exits in that circle, so that's what a rotary is, or that's the rotary he was in. And it turns out as he was going around the rotary, and he tells me that legally people in the rotary have right of way, and people entering uh, would be responsible for the accident if they cause one as they're entering the rotary. Uh, and that's what he found out through this process. Well, as he went by one of the uh, entrances to the rotary, a car came speeding down the road and apparently uh, didn't even step on their brakes and came right into the rotary and smashes into his car. Uh, the repairs came to about eight or $9,000. Um, he was told by several people that he had right of way and that it shouldn't be any problem, even at the site, and he didn't expect any problems because the police officer also indicated that he, he had the right of way. But after the insurance companies got involved, he started getting uh, nasty letters that he was responsible, and they were citing all kinds of reasons that weren't were not true about him and why he was responsible. And he was sharing this with his brother one day. And this man, by the way, who wrote to us is a man of prayer. He's a good, decent person. He doesn't try to, you know, take advantage of people. But suddenly now the sky was falling upon him. He was being sued. Uh, so he was talking to his brother, and his brother was pretty savvy about these kinds of things. And furthermore, his brother chuckled and said, Look, I bought you a gift when you bought the new car. I bought you a gift, a dash cam. You've got a camera right there on the dashboard. So you should take a look at that and see what that reveals. And sure enough, the dash cam miraculously captured the whole thing. The camera was pointed in the right direction on the right side of the car. If it was pointing straight ahead, he would not have gotten the correct impact and proof that he was innocent. And so he won the case because he had a dash cam recording the whole event. And he was oblivious to thinking about it at all until his brother brought it up. So certainly this was a coincidence miracle where God inspired him 
through the comments of his brother. And very often that's what happens to us. Someone will say something to us because God is putting the thought into their mind. And God is speaking to us through some other person when that happens. Our next coincidence miracle is something that happened to me personally. Uh, I was inspired over a three-day period. I kept getting a thought to call a friend of mine. I have not heard from him for about five months or so. And um, I was concerned because we, we talk more frequently than that. And it was coming to my mind to call him. So three days, but, you know, I'd get the thought, and then I'd get busy with something else, uh, as most of us do. So three days went by. And later on the third day, I was getting ready to drive home from a, a business meeting I had. And before I left the parking lot, I got into my car and it hit me like a ton of bricks that, you know, it's almost four days now. I keep getting thoughts to call my friend. So I thought, let me do it right now before I even move the car. So while I was sitting in the lot getting ready to leave, I decided to call. And uh, what happened was pretty miraculous. Uh, as I was about to start dialing the number, I noticed my odometer on my car ended in the number 555. And it just turns out that this friend of mine, his, his favorite number in history ever since he was a child was the number 555. The reason is that his mother told him when he was very young that every time something miraculous was happening, every time she prayed for something and God was answering her prayers, that she would see the number 555. So he grew up expecting that. Uh, and here I am now knowing that story. I'm about ready to call him after three days. And as I'm getting ready to call him, I see the number 555. It just changed. You know, it was the last three numbers on my odometer, which means that I, the last uh, corner that I turned or uh, when I pulled into this driveway, it changed to three fives right here on the spot. And that wasn't the only amazing thing because I looked out my front window uh, of the car and there was an adv advertisement on a pole right in front of my car, an advertisement for the company that this friend of mine worked for. So there's two things right there as I'm sitting in the car thinking I finally have to call him. I see the odometer with the three fives, which is his fav favorite famous number, which, by the way, stands for grace, the presence of God, the power of God. That's what the number stands for. And I look up and I see a pole in front of my car in his parking lot, and it's got an advertisement for his company. So there was, I was getting clear signs that I was exactly where I had to be in this parking lot. Uh, with the odometer and the pole saying, yes, you should be calling him. So I did call, and unfortunately, I found out that he's been suffering pain for about four or five months. Uh, he's been diagnosed with a cyst or a tumor on his spine, and it's been causing great pain, uh, certainly I can imagine, when he moves and walks. And so we talked about it for a while, and he's going to see a doctor very shortly, you know, in a few days, uh, but he sounded like he was in terrible agony. And so uh, we agreed, we talked about it, and we agreed, and I told him about I just saw the odometer, and I just saw the ad advertisement about his company, and I told him what I just told you, that for three days I've been thinking of calling, and it just came to a head right now that I had to call you right now. And so he was uh, amazed also at the story. So we agreed that we would both pray that his problem, if God wanted to send him a miracle, if God would grant him a miracle and cure him, that he would please do it by Sunday night at 5.55 p.m. We picked the number 555, which is his mother's uh, favorite number. She has passed on. She's in heaven now, and it's his favorite number. So we picked the number 5.55 p.m. on Sunday to be the, the miracle would arrive by then, certainly earlier if possible, but... Um, we're hoping and praying that it will happen by then. Our next coincidence miracle is another thing that happened to me personally. You know, many of us have missions in our life, and if we're praying for wisdom, we uh, want to be inspired by God and do God's will. And as most of you know, I've written two books about all of that, uh, how to discern God's will and how to do God's will, and how to make sure you're, you're hearing from him when you're getting inspirations and ideas 
after you pray. And I uh, typically hand out uh, little business cards or flyers at uh, vacation spots or at beaches and parks uh, when I can, when I can get to them. And so I was inspired to do that one day and uh, passed out a lot of cards. And at the end of the day, uh, I was tired. It was time to leave. And as I was leaving, I noticed I had two business cards left. And these little business cards highlight our website and some things of interest about uh, our books and the many lectures and book signings that I have done already in my life about the two books. Uh, And I noticed I had two cards left, so I got inspired. I felt God telling me, turn around and pass out the last two cards, and before you leave, so you get at least another two cards handed out. So before I went through the exit, I turned around uh, and looked to see where I should go and hand out two cards. And just as I did that, I heard uh, someone call my name, and I looked toward them, and they came over and said, you know, Tony, I'm so delighted I met you. I I got a card from you last year, and I was hoping I'd see you at the, the park today. Um, so I'm gl- so glad I did. This is a coincidence miracle, Tony, because I, I, I didn't have any contact information for you, and I wanted to get another card. So do you have another card? And there were two people there together, one person uh, asking for the cards. So I gave out those two cards. And this was very providential, as I just told you earlier. I was inspired to turn around and pass out two cards. And exactly as I turned around, I don't even think I took two footsteps uh, back into the park. Uh, These people were leaving for the day, and they met me right there at the exit just as I turned around. So that's a perfectly uh, mapped out coincidence miracle showing that God was inspiring me at the precise time that people were right there behind me looking for me. Um, so, and then the next thing was when I got home uh, about an hour later, I checked my email and coincidence of coincidences, there was another person who sent me an email and they said also that they got my card a year ago and uh, it, it's been life changing, uh, had a great effect on them uh, now that they've got to the website uh, and looked at the card information. And so there was two people at the end of my day confirming that I was doing God's will after all. You know, you wonder if you are sometimes. And I had two people at the end of my day confirming absolutely. And I was inspired to turn around at the park. So I had the inspiration from God, which is another sign, another clue. So all these coincidences coincidences line up. You know, you get inspired to turn around, hand out the last two cards. And as soon as you turn around, there's somebody there looking for you from the prior year. And then you get home, and there's an email, again, from somebody from the prior year who wanted to tell you that the website was very helpful to them. Our website, again, is wcatradio.com slash miracles slash, one more time, wcatradio.com slash miracles slash. Our next coincidence miracle is something that happened to me the very next day. Uh, I was awakened about a minute before the alarm went off, and when that happens to me, I'm usually inspired to spend some time talking to God before I start my day, and I was inspired to go post something on Facebook and LinkedIn, and I did so, and I noticed when I finished typing what I wanted to post on Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, I finished typing it, and it came out to exactly the number of spaces allowed by LinkedIn, so it was, you know, I was inspired what to type, and and this is a great blessing because coincidentally I wrote the words that I was inspired and it came out precisely to the exact number of keystrokes that I, you are allowed on LinkedIn. I hope you too notice coincidences like this, you know, waking up before the alarm and when you type something, you get the exact number of letters, especially when you're asking God what to write and he's inspiring you what to type. When the letters come out exactly, that's certainly a coincidence miracle. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.